Among the most basic of human needs is the need to connect with others. With a smile or laugh, we connect with people every single day. But the meaning of our real world connections often gets lost online. And so began the Google Plus project to help make connecting online more like we do in real life. So you can share the things you love with the people you love and get closer to the people you care about, make discoveries, explore the stuff you're into, and get together. Everybody say hi, that's the whole world. Can I hug you? Yeah. Ah. We're the first ones that are doing it like this. It's history. Look, you guys have the greatest technology at your fingertips. <laughs> have a boy. Oh. Thanks, everybody. We are incredibly grateful to the hundreds and millions of uh, you out there who joined Google Plus uh, in just under two short years. And we can think of no better way to say thank you than to continue to innovate and to build a product that people truly love. And so I'm here to show you what's next with Google+. Today, we're introducing 41 new features across three major areas of Google+. First, a new, newly designed stream, a new Hangouts application, and a fundamentally new Photos experience. We have a lot to talk about. Let's get started. Let's begin with the stream. Now, it's no surprise that mobile devices are increasingly prevalent and important in our lives. It's the computer that's with us all the time. And so the Google Plus team has spent a lot of time making sure that that core stream experience on mobile absolutely rocks. And the feedback has been fantastic. And so today, we're taking that multi-column design and bringing it to lots more devices. Yes, from your phone to your tablet and even your desktop, you're going to see a newly designed stream. We're also fixing a long-standing problem with today's social streams, and that's they're flat. It's very easy to see a long list of things that have been shared with you, kind of like a never-ending newspaper. But it's nearly impossible to go deeper on a topic or interest that you might have, and we think we can fix that. So this new design, is, this new stream, is about design and depth. Maybe the best thing to do is just show you. What you're looking at is Google Plus as, as it exists this morning. What you're going to see start rolling out uh, later today is the new Google Plus, which looks like this. You can see we've taken that multi-column design and brought it to the desktop and really made something beautiful. Um, it's dynamic, meaning depending upon the size of your screen, it can either be one column, two column, or three columns. And we've made sure to give you choice. So if you go under the More menu, you're always able to go to a single column if that's what you prefer. Of course, uh, in this multi-column design, we've made sure that uh, posts like photos and videos can span multiple columns so you get something that's truly immersive. And we've made sure that it's fast, fluid, and fun. And so we put delightful animations throughout the product. For example, a share box that animates out, menus that slide in and out to get out of the way, and even cards and, and, uh, that flip and fade beautifully. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. But it's not just about the design. It's about depth. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it's very difficult to go deeper on a topic or an interest you care about. We think we've solved this problem, and today we're introducing related hashtags. What we'll do is we'll analyze the content of a post, and Google will put on the appropriate hashtag. How does that work? Well, let's take a look. Here's a post about the San Francisco Giants baseball team. 
it's not just about the Giants, it's about Buster Posey, a particular player, uh, as well. And note in the top, we've automatically tagged that post, and we know it's about uh, those two topics. But that's only half the magic. We also then rank uh, and, and search the entire universe of Google Plus content, and we rank it just for you. So when Matt clicks on one of those hashtags, watch what happens. We flip the card over, and we then show you related items from the most important sources and social proximity to you. Amazing, isn't it? Now, if you think that's impressive, let's take a look at another one of these posts. Um, in this case, one of the noted photographers on our service has posted a picture of Paris, in particular the Eiffel Tower. Nowhere in his post or in the comments is the word Eiffel Tower. But if you notice, Google has automatically hashtagged this with the Eiffel Tower. How did we do that? Well, we did image analysis and combined with the knowledge graph that recognizes important landmarks, and Google knew that this was about the Eiffel Tower. So if you click, why, you can just go deeper and click through other posts about the Eiffel Tower. Now, of course, we deeply respect the content producer. And so you always have the option of telling Google, either on a particular post or globally, whether you want your content to have this amazing related hashtags feature. And if we ever get it wrong and have the wrong hashtag, you could always exit out. Um, in either case, we think what we've built here is a stream that's about design and depth, really allowing you to go deeper on your interests. Now, we don't have time to show you all of the features. There's just too many to talk about today, but we'll be rolling this out this afternoon. We hope that you'll absolutely love it. Okay, now let's talk about Hangouts. You know, at Google, uh, we have a point of view about software and technology, namely that it should get out of the way uh, and allow people to do what they do best. That's live, learn, and love. Uh, that was true even when we started Google+. You know, other sites when we started often asked you to think of your relationships as either friends or not friends. And we argued that was not reflective of real life. In real life, you don't have this, you have this. And so we built circles as a core part of Google+. And we're happy to report that today, more than half of all sharing that's done on Google+, is done to private circles. Now, that same dynamic exists in the world of real-time communications. When you think about a real-time communication, somebody you want to talk with, um, you don't think about wanting to talk to a computer. You want to talk to a person. And yet, despite 50 years of work in real-time communication products, we still are stuck with gadgets that get in the way. Think for a moment about some of the real-time communications products, the choices that you have. Some are very nice. They work on one platform. So if you think about your friend, you have to ask yourself, are they on a particular operating system? Why should OSs matter? People matter. Or think about other choices that are very popular on mobile. Fantastic ways to communicate on mobile, but if your brother is at work on a desktop or a laptop, why should he be left out? Or there are other solutions that do group video very, very well and messaging, but it's very difficult to do photos. Frankly, even Google's own services have been fragmented uh, and, uh, and, and confused at times. What we want to do is fill in all the boxes, because when we fill in all the boxes, we believe finally Technology can just go away, and people can focus on what makes them the happiest, and that's just hanging out. So we're introducing today a new application, Hangouts, and we think we've built a product that is about conversations that last with people that you love. Let me show you the product. Now, as Matt goes to the demo here, the first thing you'll notice on Matt's uh, Android phone is the new icon, a standalone app uh, and Matt will go ahead and click on Hangouts and open up the application. Now, you're looking here at a list of conversations, uh, not contacts. Some of those conversations are one-on-one. -on -one. Some of those conversations are group conversations. But the primary pivot, the focus, is on those conversations. 
Now, if Matt wants to get to his contacts, maybe he wants to add someone, it's one tap away. You can see Google will rank the important uh, people that he normally talks to and make that easily available for either a message or a video call. But let's go back to the conversations. There's several attributes about these conversations that, are, uh, that I want to talk about. The first is my favorite, and that is these conversations can be long lasting. So as Matt goes back in time, why you're able to see that conversation. Imagine that you have your family in a conversation for many months or a year. There's the holiday party, there's the vacation you took together, there's important moments like, a, uh, like the birth of a child. All those things are stored with you, even as, uh, even as you change devices in those long running conversations. Of course we give you the ability to turn off history. Of course we give you the ability to delete those things. But having the ability to save those conversations is, I think, delightful and amazing. Another aspect is that the conversations are rich and alive. Um, your photos are stored in albums. This is amazing. This baby's not even three months old, and he's already learned how to face palm. OK. Um, <laughs> but all the images that you've shared as a family are all right there. Um, in addition to beautiful images that are easily stored and saved, the conversation feels alive. Look at the bottom. You can there see, it as, as people join, they show up. As they're typing, they animate out. You can see exactly where someone has read to. It really feels like you're in the same room together. And we think that's, that's delightful. Uh, by the way, you're looking at it on the web, you're looking at it on Android, and you're looking at it on iOS, all available today. And by the way, two other points. One is a point that Hugo made. I think you're going to love how the notifications are all synced. So if you wipe a notification from the desktop or an and on Android, it'll go away on another device. It's beautiful. I think you'll like that. But my favorite feature, uh, sorry about that. Let's go back to the demo. Um, the one other feature I didn't uh, talk about that was pretty critical, which is at Google, we've always believed that the best way to do real-time communications is face to face to face. And so in that conversation, Matt can tap on that video icon, and everyone in that conversation will be dropped into a video chat. There you can see Matt. He's into the video chat, and everyone's being dropped in. Group video at no charge. Isn't that fantastic? OK, let's go back to the slides. OK, now let's switch topics. And finally, let's talk about 